All right, guys, welcome back to part number seven of Outer Wilds. And um, coming to you a little bit earlier than normal because I decided to uh, postpone the regular poll stream that we'll be doing on a Friday night and uh, continue on with our momentum that we had last night on uh, Outer Wilds. The, um, the loop and everything was quite annoying in a way that final loop because it happened just at the wrong time as we was like really we'd like discovered like a brand new thing about the quantum mechanics so um it kind of came at a bit of a bad time um and that's kind of what spurred my decision sorry i must about my what spurred my decision and encouraged me to uh, to come back to this today instead of playing portal but i'm not going to read any of the ship logs or anything um uh, Starting off straight away, what we're going to do is we're going to head straight to um, Giants Deep. And we're going to finish off first what we was doing last night when the um, loop kicked in. And um, we're going to finish that off and then we will come back and check the ship log. Um, uh, uh, okay. You're gonna sue? No! Okay, so, hold on. You said about this, didn't you, Mira? LB, I remember you saying about this, actually. Thanks for reminding me. There we go. There we go. How you doing, Coco? Hope you're well. Atom, what's going on? The best narrator award in YouTube intro is... Not me. <laughs> Break. looking for, for lack of a better term the Omega Funnel we can't go through it we have to go over it there we go So remember that uh, square is not circle. All right, let's go back to the uh, top of the tower. Uh, let's try and catch up on some comments here while I'm going through. Um, almost five pages. You just got to check everything's in order. Well, at least, you know, you've got the majority of it done, Mika. That's the best thing. And you also made some small progress on your master thesis yesterday as well. That's cool. And then you said you've been struggling recently um, at the moment. Uh, You've been struggling recently to sort of get motivated and to focus and to buckle down, so glad that um, you're finding that sort of motivational streak in yourself at the minute, Mika. It's good to hear. Pretty sure this is where deadly, deadly toxic goo is made from. Maybe, quite possibly. Used to watch a lot of LB stuff for a long time. I think a lot of... Uh, a lot of people feel the same, Coco. We all miss LB. It's always an uh, it's always an honour and a privilege when uh, he gets to come and hang out with us. All right. So I got to remember what we're doing here. So yeah, this is basically telling us about. If we take a photo, then we are fine. And this is, yeah, I, I kind of, I, I never really um, cottoned on properly last night. But, of course, we can um, just take a picture and hold like this. I was firing the scout last night. And LB was a bit like, uh, well, what are you firing the scout for? And you don't have to. But, yeah, makes perfect sense. 
So we take a photo and we can walk around. I don't think there's really too much more to find here, to be fair, because um, I think we've pretty much got the gist of what we need to do. Maybe the rock is back. Finally, the rock has come back to somewhere. Right, so let me take a picture of that. And let me take a picture of that. As now everything will remain in place. This is where we pretty much got to last night. I think the rock keeps showing up here. We get less frequency as well, don't we? Okay. This is the last one, but we made it harder. You did? Uh, I guess it's harder a little bit because of the... the configuration of the rocks, perhaps? Okay, so we can't do that. So let's try and get a different... Configuration. Hold on, what if? Ah. What if instead, actually, we just take a picture of this one? take a picture of this one. Oh, I can take a picture of the top one. There we go. We made it. Good on Zetrix. Welcome, welcome. Rock is saying hi every time you complete a step. <laughs> Reminds you of the Wind Temple from Wind Waker. I don't think I ever played Wind Waker. There it is. Take a picture before it disappears. Now I'm hoping, I'm sure, I'm assuming that there is no text on the other side. There is not. All right, down the hole we go. Made it. Made it to some sort of shrine over here. Let's see if there is anything else in here. See, many people really struggle with that one. No! Ah! Yeah, you know, I, 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 I didn't want to read the text, you know. I thought, you know what, that was that was easy. I want to do it all again. Because, why not? <sighs> I, don't think I, I don't think I played Wind Waker, to be honest, um, Coco. <clears throat> the one I, um, the one I've played more than any is um, Ocarina of Time. What was Wind Waker? Was Wind Waker on on the Wii or the game? Was it GameCube one? GameCube. Yeah, I didn't have a GameCube. I sort of missed out the GameCube and went. Um... So, we, the, sorry, I'll come back to a minute. Uh, the reason we shoot photographs, Mika, is because we found out late last in the episode yesterday that if we take pictures of the quantum objects, they don't move. So by taking a photo, we can force them to be in a position, basically. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of skipped the GameCube. I went from a went from a Super Nintendo 
to a um, 64. And then I didn't really have a Nintendo console. And I didn't. I had the Wii. Missed out the Wii U. And missed out the Wii U. Yeah, and then my son has a Switch. So I kind of like. I've gone kind of gone like every other console. My wife. I did buy my wife a DS at one point. And she had some of the um, Zeldas on there. Kind of remember one had like a train or something. Oh, what? What? Where did my? I only recently played um, Link to the Past for the first time. I just streamed it, I think. Sometime last year. them in the picture. That is not what I wanted to do. So that is what I wanted to do. Alright. No shenanigans this time. Let's actually read the text. We offer our congratulations. You learned the rule of quantum imaging. Take this knowledge with you on the remainder of your quantum pilgrimage. Remember, the other quantum shards have other lessons to teach. Curiosity goes with you on your journey. You walk in the footsteps of those who came before you and our, your path guides those who will follow later. Well, that's interesting. It says about the... Um says about the other shards will the other, sh other shards have lessons to teach so I guess the one on the the one on the ember twin taught us that we could um, in certain situations if we turn the lights out we can um, turn the lights out we can do um, we can move with the quantum shard right and then what did the, just trying to think what the other ones have taught us so far I'm not sure what lesson we learned from one on uh, Timber Hearth, Timber Hearth, though. Hmm. Finally, a knock stream that you are able to see live. What's going on, Sheepdog? You was here when I was playing your maps, though. Was the last week? Wasn't the week before? Wasn't you? I don't know why I said that in a really high pitch voice, but yeah, I'm sure you was. Does held knowledge and know my need to make first quantum journey. Observing a quantum object, observing an image of a quantum object. These are the same. The Nomai called this rule the rule of quantum imaging. Remember, the other quantum shards have other lessons to teach. Yeah, you see... I'm not sure what lesson we learned from the one in the grove. This was the one where if we, we turned... Um, when we turn the lights off, we could move to a different location and move with the rock, right? Yeah, this one, the late bed cave. Well, you know, you you people on the other side of the pond, you know, you're just living in the past all the time, man. Get with the program.
All right, so I guess for now, There it is. Alright, so I've got a picture of that. The picture is there. Yes, alright. The object is still there. Well, yeah, well, you know, that, that is very true, Mika. It's not very often, though, I have, like, people in the stream. Oh, I, know, I know, obviously, you've been in the stream for a considerable amount of time. And uh, it's not very often I have people on stream, though, who are kind of, like, ahead of me in time. Most of my viewers that um, I speak of regular are kind of, like, behind. All right, so... Made it onto the moon. Thought you need to take photos of the locator on the Ember Twin, not the moon directly. That's where this is the this must be the South Pole, right? Okay, that's the ship. Okay, this is the... <laughs> yeah, okay. I see, I see this game. I see this game. Oh, what is this place? Not entirely sure. Okay, so this is where it tells us where we're hovering. So these are the six locations, right? So that's the. What is that? that's the? Um, isn't that the con the probe control probe room? The probe control room symbol. Now timber hearth, giant's deep, dark bramble. At the sun, or the interloper. Brittle hollow. Ah. You have recalled the rule of rule the rule of quantum imaging. Recall the rule of quantum entanglement. Recall the rule of the sixth location. Quantum entanglement.
Ah, okay. We've moved. Okay. I'm not going to move now because I've taken a picture of something. don't know what the rule of the sixth location is. Okay. That's interesting. But this, this must be the shrine, right? This must be the shrine that's ta talked about in all the information about how to get to the sixth location where they say it normally appears at the north, right? Oh dear. Yikes, you cannot go too high there. Well, um. That's a thing that happened. I've said, look, just look at Brittle Hollow. Man, we out of time already? way to end the loop <laughs> all right so we'll uh, we'll have another look at the uh, the map in a minute but clearly we need to learn the rule of the sixth location death by big something something I already know all of the sixth okay guess we need to uh, reaffirm our knowledge
Oh. Right. Right, 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 right. <laughs> In the beginning, there was Africa. Right, if you see a quantum moon. Make sure you wave and cheer. Hi there, Mr. or Mrs. Know My Person. Um, so we're at the South Pole. Alright, so we need this to be at the north. So this is looking very different to uh, before. Yikes. We've got to be really careful here. Getting to the North Pole is not going to be easy. What's going on, Dino Killer? You, you tried playing this game, but you, kept, you got really dizzy. I wonder if, like, going in the ship here... There was anything else to... I'm here, after watching everyone discuss it, I'm about to stand on the moon. Yeah, I think we've read all this, haven't we? You think that's Sol Solanum, then? Possibly. Right, we're not going to do that because I don't want to. I think what the best thing to do, surely, would be find the shrine again. Was that the same Nomai that I saw before? Of course, though, the uh, whole quantum thing is uh, like we saw in the cave that time, like with the bones. The bones are really freaky, but they kept moving like they were walking after me or something. It was uh, quite bizarre. So this, this quantum moon thing is like freaky. It was really interesting, right, that the um, 
the terrain was changing. Or well, the terrain appears to keep changing. Now I believe... The reason the terrain keeps changing is it depends on which planet the quantum moon is near at the time we do the change. So I think, for instance, this right now, where we are right now, to me would indicate that the quantum moon is near the hourglass twins. It's obviously it's made up of the... Well, maybe not. That's not the hourglass twins, is it? Yeah, you see, now this is Giant's Deep. So, yeah, maybe that is the case, but... Is that the... Oh, that's the hourglass twins. That's not the probe at all. Yeah, because that's the... Um, yeah, that's the ash twin with the towers. Well, I thought that was the probe. I, I don't know. Honestly, I do not know. Does this count as it being near the North Pole? I wonder. No, it does not. We're close. Maybe we have to use a combination of the locations, though, to actually get to the North Pole. Okay. Um, yeah, basically we learn, we're learning about, we're learning different abilities, Mika. And each ability allows us to find out more of the truth. Ah, we've made it now. Okay. Yeah, each of our abilities allows us to find out more about the truth. And I do kind of believe that we do need to kind of, yeah, that's it. We do need to find a way to stop the loop from happening. All right. I think we've made it. I think we've made it to the sixth location. I've made my quantum pilgrimage. Where are we going now? What are we going to find here? This reminds me of um, reminds me of LV four twenty six from Aliens. I'm going to stumble across the derelict in a minute. Have a face hugger attached to our face. Mm -hmm. 
What? We have found a surviving Nomai. Holy cow. Solanum. So Solanum is not dead. Who are you? Uh, me? And you, where's the s Yeah, me and you. You do not have much connection, you and I. Still, this encounter feels special. I hope you won't mind if I think you are you of you as a friend. No, we need to do We need to do Because This is the whole this is my, this is the whole thing that we we probably should have picked up on when we've used the um the stones and and the the bit the tablet things that we've picked up in the past and the fact that we picked up on last night like the two different colors there is a two-way conversation going on one with blue and one with orange so i feel like here we need one blue and one orange to actually have the conversation here i've never met one of your kind before it's an honor to speak with you. I particularly admire your four eyes. There are many questions I would ask if I could comprehend your language. You have my gratitude for understanding mine. Imagine your purpose here is the same as mine, to learn about and to find the eye of the universe. I'm unsure how you arrived here, however, perhaps you came from another star system, as my clan originally did. I am on my first pilgrimage to the Quantum Moon. All Nomai and my clan make this journey when we come of age. Even though the eye cannot be reached from here, the quantum moon remains special to us as it carries us nearer to the eye than any other place we know. I've journeyed here to be close to the eye whilst the eye is obs obscured from our sight. We can see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye in the sky above us. We can see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye in the sky above us. So that's the reflection of the eye, right? Okay. Interesting. Should now tell him who he is, although we already know who it's who it is. Sorry, I don't know if it's he or she actually. Salan Salanum. I don't think we've read any text which um, outlines. Uh, I am Salanum, a Nomai. My clan arrived in the star system before my birth, and we now call it home. So she, okay. Interesting way to interact between like two races when you know we don't speak. Technically, we don't speak a common language. It's a very interesting way of um, this being part of it. This is the quantum moon where we are both standing. Despite also orbiting other celestial bodies, the quantum moon is the eye of the universe's moon. Okay, so it's the it's the moon. Just leave this here. I don't know why I'm like being so neat and tidy and pointing it back all the time. Uh, 
Have you encountered a quantum shard on another planet? The shards look the same as the quantum moon surface does now, while at the eye. From this, we can reasonably infer the quantum moon's natural state is as we see it now, and the eye is its primary location. Given the quantum moon is the eye's moon, it's likely that any characteristics the moon exhibits are also exhibited by the eye itself. Character the moon exhibits are also exhibited. So what we're saying that the eye can, the eye is, um, you can see it and then it will disappear, kind of thing. Is that what I think that's what Talanum's trying to say there? In fact, this moon is probably quantum because its proximity to the eye made it quantum. The same way the areas surrounding quantum shards that landed on other planets eventually become quantum too, which obviously we saw in the, uh, more than anything we saw on the, um, the Ember Twin, when we were navigating the caves, um, we got to that part and obviously the, the objects around it were sort of shifting around, and like we've seen basically on this whole planet, every time we move or look at something it changes in some way, shape or form. All right, two more. There's no fund fundamental uncertainty throughout the universe. Normally, this uncertainty is only observable. Sorry, there is a fundamental uncertainty throughout the universe. Normally, this uncertainty is only observable on a very small scale. As one approaches the eye, however, that uncertainty grows enormously. The quantum moon probably exhibits ma macroscopic quantum behavior because of its positivity to the eye. Charge that broke off from the moon have a similar effect as I imagine you've seen elsewhere in the star system. Conscious observation forces a quantum object to collapse to a single possibility. But what would happen if a conscious observer somehow entered the eye itself? Over time, this has become my clan's greatest question. We are orbiting the eye of the universe now. Although we cannot see it, only the quantum moon's reflection of it, the eye is older than the universe itself, and my clan believes it dwells in an ex extremely distant orbit around this star system. Okay. So... Um, is that it? I don't mean that in like a, oh, is that it sort of way. I mean, is that it? Is there anything else to see here? I mean, I, I kind of guess not. Other than the eye itself. Um... That just returns us back to here. Weirdly, though, okay, I was going to say, weirdly, there's like no. There didn't seem to be any like quantum behavior there for a moment. So I guess. I guess the only way back now then is to use the ship here, right? I 
Well, there was more text. Okay. Uh, no, I didn't because of the the logic I implied that um, I don't know which way we did things here. I applied the logic that we needed two different um, the two different colors. Okay, so I don't think it really matters which areas we go to here, as long as we can pro proceed like northwards. You see, it was just a, it was just a assumption I made based on what I kind of discovered about the text last night so um, that's why I kind of didn't try blue and blue I don't think I'm going to get to the north pole here am I so we need to find a different location Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Do that, it's making me pretty dizzy. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. me uh, flying too quickly. Imagine you've noticed quantum moon changes in appearance depending on which location it currently orbiting. For instance, the moon looks quite different when orbiting giants deep than it does when it's orbiting the hourglass twins. Because the quantum moon clearly changing in its different forms, the eye, being the moon's primary location, must be similarly malleable. Malleable. From this, we can hypothesize that the eye represents extreme changeability. That said, despite its okay, we're almost out of time. Um, malleability, ma malleable nature, the quantum moon becomes locked to one specific version of itself when it is consciously observed. But what would happen if a conscious observer were to enter the eye. Well, we don't know that. 
slightly because obviously um, we haven't been to the eye just yet. Like many of the clan before me, I journeyed here to see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye. This is the closest of any of us come to seeing the eye itself. You may think it's strange, but I have hypothesized that it may not be may not be entirely alive. Perhaps my journey has reached its end. First time on the quantum moon, it's my first time here. You've come here looking for answers, I hope you find them. Alright, well we've done everything with the quantum moon at least. So when the loop restarts we um we'll come back and we will um place something else in the first slot and we'll check out what the uh, the rest have to say. I missed an interesting thing by meditating. Hmm. Okay, well we can we can kind of simulate this, right? Obviously we know it's 22 minutes. Right, I'm, I'm going to try something like really bizarre here. I I don't know whether there's anything, but um, what if we sleep through? What if we sleep through the loop? And we're asleep when the loop starts. Is there any special event or anything special that happens there? Welcome to today's stream where Nock is playing Sleeping Simulator. <laughs> you know what? It's probably it's probably a game. The amount of simulator games that there are on the market these days. It's probably a thing. Sleeping simulator is your life. You wish you could lower the difficulty. I think I got like four and a half hours last night. It's like I don't know. I woke up at like I went to I went to bed. I think by the time I got into bed and whatnot last night, this morning it was about quarter to one, and um, woken up by the rain at about five o'clock this morning. So, but. That's normal. You know, I, I regularly only have like four to six hours sleep a night. I normally make up for it though. Well, I say I have four to six hours. I normally make up for it when uh, on like my non-streaming nights where I'll go to bed, put something on my tablet for a bit when my wife's like dozed off to sleep and then be prodded awake about 20 minutes later going, put your tablet away, you're asleep. <laughs> But yeah, um, I'm quite lucky that I don't really suffer too bad from um, sleep deprivation. All right. So it wakes you up at a set point. That's interesting. Very interesting. All right. Well, I guess it wakes you up like at the exact moment where the music's about to start because I I, I did notice as well. Obviously, that this is going to be like the, the best flashback ever. Look, 
I did notice that um, once the music kicks in, um, like all of the normal behaviors of like the, the text and everything, pausing time doesn't apply. The, the time still flows once you um, once the music kicks in. So. Yeah. All right, well, because I didn't get enough of it the first time, let's um let's play a little more sleep simulator only till we're going we're going to go to 11 minutes and that'll give us 11 minutes then to find the quantum moon, get to it, um get to the north pole, read the rest of the text and then hopefully we'll be at the north pole when um the event occurs. And then we might be able to get to see something very special indeed. Be interesting to see, like, if we've not actually had the we've not actually been anywhere in the event like with anybody else. I don't know if like there's any special dialogue or anything, but I mean, I don't know if it's if it's the eye that causes it. Is is the eye sort of like is the eye far enough away from the solar system? Because I'm sure um, Solanum said that the I is orbiting at a, like a certain distance outside of the solar system, didn't they? I'm sure they did. So I'm, I'm sure they said something along those lines. So all right, we'll go with ten minutes because um, we'll go with ten minutes for the simple sake that we have to find the quantum moon first. Unless we're going to get really lucky. Yeah, extremely distant orbit to the solar system, right? Have to do that just to make sure that I've locked on. Go on, Grim. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, just be, uh, if you're new to the stream, just be very careful, please, what you do and don't say, because uh, it is a blind let's play. Good day indeed, it's the weekend. Right, let's try and make her way a little bit northbound, I guess. The water I actually walked into there. Time for Get Dizzy Simulator 2021. 20, uh, oh, we can't go this way. Do you know what? I've never been affected at all, ever, by a game, but right now. 
doing the these um, rotations and spinning around as fast as I am is actually making me feel quite sick. I've never ever had that experience in a video game before. Jeez. Yo, crazy, what's going on? I'm oh, back here. Yeah, that's what uh, Simon does from uh, CTC, CTC, isn't it? One today is worth two tomorrows. Uh, not the place I want to be. I need um, timber hearth, don't I? There we go. You just get motion sick, but now you get car sick. Just need to not spin around so quickly. He says while spinning around quite quickly. So this this here, um, I suppose I don't think it was misleading as such, but the bit of information I read regarding um, there was more to learn at uh, the, the shards I think like I, I, I was I was trying to sort of say earlier on I don't know what I was meant to learn at the one on Timber Hearth and I don't think pers I don't think as such there is something to learn on every single one just there's three kind of there's two or three core things which we've learned obviously which is take a photo close your eyes and um, open the door when it's north I'm good, thanks, Crazy. Yep. Yeah. I've been um, very well, thank you. Um, a rundown of kind of like what I know so far, Crazy, is um, we're, in, we're stuck in a 22 minute loop. Um, where in that 22 minute period of time, the um, eye of the solar system, the sun of the solar system um, goes into supernova and destroys everything. And we're sort of traveling the universe from planet to planet at the minute, trying to understand and pick up bits of information. Um, but as of yet, we don't really know what the end game is, although I theorize that we can potentially stop the supernova because there's a potential the again a potential theory of mine is that it's not a supernova as, as such it's more of like a, a high energy kind of explosion that's going on but they're all sort of just me theorizing nothing is um set in stone at the moment so um yeah all right so we've done we're finished with the quantum moonstone we've we've seen all of those so we can we can get rid of that one right because we've seen all of those so let's Pick up the eye. The eye and me. Got to tell me. Suppose you could reach the eye of the universe, would you try to enter it? What do you imagine the effects of a conscious observer might be? When I was a child, I used to believe. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
Well, I'll get confused. Should be on this one first. Many in my clan have believed the eye call called to us for a particular purpose. When I was a child, I used to believe the eye was a male malevolent um, was mal malevolent malevolent. I'm not even sure what that word means. To have lured my clan to this star system, only to then vanish from them completely. There was like a like a way of like teasing. Like it's like it like lured them in with like some. Is that what it means? Like it's a way of like teasing them. Malevolent. It was bad. Okay. But I don't fear the eye anymore. In fact, it has become my fondant hope to see the eye itself someday. But I fear this may be beyond my reach. You may think I'm strange, but I have a hy hypothesis that I may not be entirely alive. Perhaps my journey has reached its end. Hmm. I'm not so sure. Now, haven't we already done the you and me together? We do not have much connection, you and I. Still, this encounter feels special. I hope you don't mind anything, Mr. Yeah, we've already seen that one. These are two telnets of know my physiology. To seek out and to understand is our way of living. Two tenants, sorry. Did I say telnets? I computing on the brain, seriously. So their philosophy is to seek out and understand. Mika, are you, are you are you secretly a nomai? <laughs> I know how you love to sort of like seek out new information and um, understand how it works, understand how it works and what it means. All right, so um, I guess we just got to wait now, yeah. Interesting that, like, interesting that wherever we are, we're always 71 meters away from the quantum moon. Or, I wonder if that's just like 71 meters away from the South Pole, maybe. Hmm. Say cheese. Um, 
I suppose if you go anywhere sort of like outside the bounds of the the clouds, I guess it's um So I guess to It gets to a point where it just sort of like drops down, doesn't it? And does nothing else. Which is quite interesting. So I'm guessing whatever we're going to see here is we're going to see something interesting perhaps in the reflection of the eye. Maybe. Feel like the wind just picked up on this uh, moon a bit as well. Um, certainly curious. Certainly curious. I've actually seen that before, though, LB, I'll be honest. <laughs> I saw it in a previous episode when I was, like, um, miles and miles away from the center. Um, okay, so that kind of, to me... The fact that there is um, no my still alive I just wonder to myself how long has Solanum been there for because it doesn't actually look like It doesn't look like anyone's been near the Hanging City on um, oh. Ruthal Hollow for like a long, long time. But the ship, I'm sure that's the, the information was the ship went from the ship went from there to the quantum moon using the gravity cannon on Brittle Hollow. So with regards to the dead body, there was an interesting thing that Solanum said there, which was, um, I don't even know if I'm still alive. So the fact that the quantum moon sixth location is the eye, as far as we know, does it does it maybe indicate that the eye is a place where people's memories and consciousness live live when they are dead obviously we don't we we know so let's go let's go full camera a minute while we're uh, talking we know that um we know that um, Salanum said in, the, in all that text there, Salanum said, or that we, we know from before, that um, when the Nomai get to a certain age, they make a pilgrimage to the quantum moon. Okay. So 
we what we don't know is who else made that journey at what point the only nomai we know to have made that journey is Solanum. Which then, if you sort of connect the dots between, that's the only one we know. And they also said about they didn't even know if they were still alive anymore. Maybe the body is Solanum. And their memory or their consciousness or their spirit or whatever you want to call it is living on the quantum moon in the sixth location. Don't know. Without like trawling through the rest of the text. Um, I don't know. But I mean, obviously, seconded that though, the fact that we've seen... Um, the fact that we have seen um, one living Nomai makes me think that there is one or more alive, others alive, in the form of the, in the Ash Twin Core, on the Ash Twin Project. Because I'm still, it still seems to think this, what we can see here right now, what's happening at the, um, the probe thing on the edge of Giants Deep, um, the logs stated that somebody on the, or something at the Ash Twin project fired the probe. And um, it's the probe being shot right there and then, which causes it to lose its structural integrity and break apart. So, yeah. Very, very interesting. Let's go and catch up on the ship's log. That's all we found. I think we finished this whole segment here. I found a dead Nomite in a spacesuit near the South Pole. Okay, so there we go. Salam has a hypothesis that she may not be entirely alive. So, again, that references that uh, Salam is indeed a woman or a female. Um, not necessarily a woman because they're not humans. Um, I met a living Nomai named Salam at South Pole. Quantum Moon is the eye. It's the eye of the universe's moon. At this location, the quantum moon becomes a reflection of the eye itself. The eye is like it's the source of all macroscopic quantum phenomena in the solar system. Solana wonders what would happen if conscious observer were ever to enter the eye. Conscious observer. So does that mean... By that, are they saying, like, somebody who's alive? Yeah. I met a living nomad to learn about the South Pole! Exclaimed. I'm, I, I can understand why you like it though, Mika, to be fair, because it is quite... There, it's, it's quite deep. It's quite under... It's quite interesting to find out, um, like, the thoughts behind this race of people, the Nomai, and how they thought and how they perceived everything. And obviously our interpretation of that from there. Okay. I wonder if... To be able to so to be able to finish like this bit off, we need to go and find Feldspar at Dark Bramble. Now I'm pretty sure Dark Bramble was the place that we went to before, and we just got completely eaten by one of the anglerfish. So, oh yeah, we st we've 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 still got more to explore. But like at the minute though, we have. 
I know the gravity cannon is like not connected to anything, but we kind of look like we've finished all that bit there for now. Escape pod three is on dark bramble, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Don't know about the vessel. Or oh, the actual ship. The ship crashed in dark bramble as well. So there's there's an escape pod and the vessel is there as well. So Still don't know about how to get to the Black Hole Forge. Maybe we get there from the Ash Twin Tower. Probably makes sense. Maybe we can warp to the Ash Twin, uh, warp to Brittle Hollow from the Ash Twin, and that will actually take us to the upside down part of the Hanging City. Be the city, yes, it's the Hanging City, isn't it? Yeah. Sun Station again, we get there via the Ash Twin. The Ash Twin project there is the big is the big one, isn't it? And we have like the ruptured core here. We still we still we, we struggled last yes last episode. Um We need to find the um We need to go back to the, the interloper and we need to find Alright, let's go and um, we're going to go and head back to the interloper. See if we can't get back below the surface. had that issue where I've had to reconnect my controller up till now and now I've had to do it twice in one stream. weird though how it's taken like 18 hours to manifest itself all right maybe i can observe it from over here and we can look for the on the sunward side it said Gotta be on here somewhere, surely. this hole in the ice.
think I might be dead. No, I think we're safe. We are safe. Oh. Did you look at that? We found it. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, so... Um, doing idiot I didn't realize it was a slippery slope like that Too much stronger energy readings now that we're beneath the crust whatever it is must lie somewhere below below close to the comet center and I'm starting to think it's more dangerous than we realized Clary can you hear us Yes, but your voice is faint. I fear we'll lose communication entirely if you continue any deeper. Keep the shuttle warm for us, Clary. We'll return the moment we identify the source of the energy reading. I understand, but be cautious, both of you. Okay. They all kind of look safe somewhat. It's not safe. It's not safe. <laughs> I see what you meant in the comments now, LB, <laughs> when I got here before, that I completely like looked out choosing the right tunnel. In um in the in an earlier episode though um, Zeatrix, um we just randomly picked a tunnel. We've been there once before, and I can't remember which one I picked. But we we did literally just looked out completely and utterly randomly chose a path, and it was the right one. So let's see if I can, um, let's see then if I can choose the, or if I can at least can find the right location again now. Wow. Thanks, autopilot. Problem is I gotta be very careful we're getting close to that sun. Uh, 
Everybody knows the answer to that, LB. It's a two word answer and it begins with N, N to O. You'd thought it'd be pretty obvious, right? Oh, hang about. We're dead. We're so dead. We're so gonna die. Oh, okay, no, we're not. Don't freeze, though. Don't freeze. God damn it. Sorry. Okay. Got to wait for this now to come back towards the sun then, haven't I? The um, so what happens is as we get close to the sun, it melts the ice, and that allows us to get below. Well, I don't think there's much to explore on the interloper. I mean, obviously, we know the ship's on the dark side of the... Um, we know the ship is on the dark side of the... Um, comet? Is it a comet? Would you call it a comet? I guess not. that makes total sense now as to why I couldn't find my way in previously yeah I thought it was a comment I, I just doubted myself so my hunch is here is we, we enter in here in this like little channel here once the um, we get close enough to the sun, got a little bit, um, a little bit more to go though until we're going to make it back towards the sun. Um, 
so yeah, I kind I kind of should have guessed really though that um you know there was sort of like a time restraint on getting into the, like this place as there is with um the Ash Twin. Of course, you have to wait quite late for a lot of the towers to be exposed, so you can't actually um explore too much of it too early. Excuse me. So yeah, it's very interesting. I think we're going to start now making our way back in down this left hand side towards the sun so hopefully relatively soon we'll be able to drop back down below drop back down below so i can actually cross out this um this note i've got here which is there is the interloper oh no cross out the Quantum object question mark photo question mark. What do I think I'll find inside the comet? I don't know, but they um the Nomai came here because their ship was or had detected a very a strange signal, hadn't it? So I don't know what I, I it'd be interesting. I'm not really sure what is giving off that signal. But we're definitely gonna find something that is gonna reveal some sort of signal to us. What was that? I find it interesting as well with like the interloper, how it just, how like the front of this always faces the sun as well. It's quite bizarre, isn't it? I, I wasn't thinking sun f snowflakes so much as I was thinking it looked a bit like a um, just like the top of a um, it looked like the top of like a tin can or something. You know when you like use a can opener and you take the lid off a can. The paranoia says I should refuel while I'm waiting. Bad shout. May your paranoia be um I don't know, your paranoia be what resolved? Unneeded anymore? Does it really? I wasn't aware of that, LB, I'll be honest. Right, here we go. At least we know path number one is a no go.
Well, that's certain death down there. Oh, wait a second, there's another path. Is there another path up the top there? This guy fell foul of the um, ghost matter. Oh, well, there's no gravity here either. The focal stone casing here seems to be the source of the energy readings. No, rather. No, rather, the source is what is within the stone. I'm detecting some form of exotic matter. Yeah, I suppose that's a good point, LB. I never thought about launching it. I, I kind of like, I don't know. It's kind of like I sort of either think to launch it or think to take photos, but never think to use a combination of both, so... The stone is muting our energy readings. They should be 10 times what we're seeing at least. Pi, I don't think we want this matter interacting with us. As far as I can tell, direct contact with it would almost certainly be fatal. It is, so hold on, is this... Um, is this like the source of the ghost matter? I've never encountered anything like this casing, but it's... It's all that's protecting us from what's inside. Worse still, this matter is disturbingly volatile. Pi, whatever the matter inside this stone casing is, it's more than just profoundly unstable. It's under tons of pressure. Look at this density scan. I've never seen anything this tightly compact before. What is this? This is orders of magnitude. This is orders of magnitude worse than I'd imagined. If the stone were to rupture, the lethal matter within could rapidly expand, completely blanketing this star system almost instantly. And the pressure is still... Oh, when did I get to? Um, the pressure is still building as the comet approaches the star system. Turns to the shore right now. The rest of our friends need to know they're in terrible danger. Leave your equipment and run. What are you doing, Pi? The more we know about this alien matter, the better our chances of survival. I will learn what I can here. Go warn the others. Maybe they can construct shelter now, somehow. Now, Poke. All right, interestingly, though, this um, it says here. If the stone were to rupture, the lethal matter within would rapidly expand, completely blanketing the star system almost instantaneously. Have we found... Have we found the cause of the explosion? Hmm. Well, yeah, and it's called the ruptured core, so I guess the answer is no, it already ruptured. Right?
That's just where we came in. Can't go through there. What's that? Is that ghost matter or... I think it must be. It just looks... One looks really weird compared to the others. Compared to... I suppose not, actually. Well, I think it's the ghost matter that came out of this casing. Because looking at what I guess happened here is this was all enclosed and the pressure built so much that it ruptured and exploded. Hence why these two Nomai have got ghost matter crystals like stuck inside them and it's all on the walls and everything around here. I think this is the origin of the ghost matter. No, I don't think there is... Don't think there's anything else to find here, though. Maybe I did. But, I mean, we're talking... Previous episode, LB, where... Didn't we have a conversation earlier on about... Uh, the, last night about my terrible short-term memory and stuff. just die from oxygen de deprivation. Um, well, yeah, if I, if I did, like, mention something or theorise something, maybe, you know, it won't be spoilers if you uh, want to jog my memory. If it's something that has actually come out of my mouth and I've said it, then... Okay. They all died in their sleep. I mean, I guess that would sort of make sense in a way, because if we look at here, look, um, yeah, you see, they've said here that they theorized that the exotic matter within would rapidly expand, completely blanketing the solar system almost instantaneously instantaneously so i guess putting that previous comment 
in with this, we can maybe assume that the core ruptured, the ghost matter sort of was put out everywhere, and um, yeah, maybe it ruptured at night time while the Nomires were asleep, and it um, sort of they, they killed them while they were sleeping. It's like mass extinction because of that one action. I mean, I don't think there are. It, it wouldn't be mass extinction per se because um, obviously some of them survived. We don't know as well, though. You know what happened to Clary, though? Clary stayed in the shuttle, right? To keep it warm. Now, we can see, obviously, that the shuttle was frozen. But I don't believe we've found a third Know My Body there, have we? But... One would assume... Clary was still somewhere in the interloper because she's not in the ship when we recalled the ship using the gravity cannon, was she? But yeah, I believe we've just discovered the um, the origins of the ghost matter. to uh, we carry on all right then we are back and uh okay so um let's have a look I think it's probably time to try and pin down this guy on Dark Bramble. Now, the problem is problem is, I'm sure when we went to Dark Bramble before, we got swallowed up. I don't really have a lot about. I don't have a lot of information about Dark Bramble. There's one other place I do actually want to go. Yeah, you see. All right, I'm going to go back to the Ember Twin because I still don't believe I. Actually, maybe I don't need to go back to the Ember Twin. Thanks, Atrix. Let's just land them in. Um, right. No, my children used to play a game here. One player was the anglerfish and wore a blindfold. So the anglerfish are blind, right? So 
see, it doesn't really tell me a lot there, though, about how to avoid... They learned how to evade the anglerfish by studying an anglerfish fossil they found on the Ember Twin. Really? Well, it'll be sound, won't it? Can't see, then you're going to have honed your sound sense. So I guess the way to evade them is just to be quiet. Which I guess is probably what this is alluding to here. Because it's about they had to sneak across to the other side. I, I said this was a bit like red light, green light. But I think, I don't think there's... I don't think there was like any way that the there was only certain times when the um, there was only certain times when the anglerfish could actually like catch and, and find the 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 people who were trying to to come across. Sorry, I'm just doing your stretch. I'll be in my posture and hydrate and everything. Thanks for redeeming those. Um, I've been that engrossed in the game. I've uh, completely. Completely missed all of those, although it was only five minutes ago, so I just missed them. Um, yeah, so okay, so maybe we just need to be quiet. There's also, though, one other place we have yet to go. I don't know if there's anything on here that we can find, but we haven't been to Hollow's Lantern. And it certainly looked like when we briefly looked at it earlier, it did sort of look like we might be able to traverse parts of this. Now, I don't know if, like, some of the other um, planets, the more rocks it fires, maybe reveals more of the surface. But I definitely thought when we, like, kind of got close to here earlier on. Definitely, so, yeah, you see, it definitely seems like it looked like there could be areas where we can land on. I don't know. We'll, um, we'll come back to that at a later stage, I guess. Uh, right, we are looking for... That beast. There is a place to... Hold on there. Pretty hot on the surface of things. It was pretty hot.
Well, I think it's just the uh, the quirkiness sometimes of flying the spaceships. It's going to go horribly wrong. It's fine. <laughs> Who needs a landing cam? Increase solar activity detected. Increase volcanic activity detected. Location is now inhospitable. Evacuation recommended. Hmm. You ain't kidding. Friends in Timberhooth Mines, the last type of ore you sent to survive the longest in direct heat. Can you send us more of the same for additional testing? We're attempting to improve its durability for our forge, and our forge has already burned through everything you sent. We'll deliver more ore to Hollow's Lantern immediately. You must be fired up about crafting the Ash Twin Project's protective shell. My gratitude, I imagine, will also have to have an update estimate soon of how much ore is needed to seal off the Ash Twin Project. Yes, the idea of an encasement that's supernova proof. An encasement that's supernova proof. There we go. However, briefly, has has kindled my curiosity. Will it be more than we initially thought? It will be significantly more. The smallest crack or opening in the protective shell would destroy everything. So, they were building something which was supernova proof. Ha! I was like, what's happening here? And then, I suddenly realised you've picked up in the air. Uh, the tractor beam of your ship. Yes, yeah, the mines, though, isn't it? We've been down to the mines already and explored everything there is to explore there. So that's fine. Okay. I'm guessing there's going to be other things to find in. The other There's nothing in that one. That's one we were just in a moment ago. Believe at least. The 
something in there. Nothing in there. Is there any of the fall? One, two, three, four. I think there may be only four. That was the only thing I think that we. That was the, that was the only thing to find in there then. Okay. Um. Dark Rumble, here we come. Yeah. And just briefly supernova proof shell though to encase the Ash Twin project. got the uh, lantern is uh, now lit up oh just okay that's interesting so I take it we don't actually I say it didn't seem like we was going to um this dress beacon yeah but even when I like came out the ship's log though LB it didn't seem like it was um I was making a way towards Dark Bramble, which was like confused about. All right, so checking here on the outside. Doesn't appear. thinking do I just move really slowly here is that the plan
pretty nervous right now. <laughs> Man, this place is massive. Okay. So, surely there's got to be a way into this somehow.
Don't say that I'll be, because I'll probably get stopped in a minute. Alrighty then. We have found Feldspar. I think that's the last one, isn't it, as well? Whoa! Where'd you come from? No one's coming here. Well, ever, actually. That makes you the second Harthian to ever reach Dark Bramble. Well, after me, of course. Well done. Say, it's you. They made you an astronaut. And you haven't blown yourself up yet. Good for you. Uh, Felspar, you're alive. You never were the brightest hatchling, were you? Yeah, that's right. I'm alive. Been camping out here since my ship, uh, you know, crashed violently. Yeah, weren't you the greatest pilot in history? I haven't lived in polite society for a while, so I'm just going to go ahead and assume that wasn't sarcasm. My story goes like this. I just finished exploring the core of Giant's Deep, and I wanted to try my hand at Dark Bramble, seeing as no one had ever before. Getting around in Dark Bramble was easy, mind you. Once you've dodged one massive interdimensional vine bristling with thorns, you've dodged them all. But after a while, I run into this huge anglerfish. You've seen him. Big, gnarly things. And this was the biggest one I've ever seen. I'll, I pull a few stunts, try to shake the thing off. Nothing too fancy. I'm going full speed when the fish clips me, knocks me into a vine, and... Well, like I said, I crash. Blammo. On impact, my ship starts making noises like it's coming apart from the inside, and I think, well, this ain't great. Sure enough, I barely get out before the electronic system starts sparking like crazy. It's either move fast or die on it unpleasantly, so I had to put a little distance between me and my poor friend. I count out near where I crashed at first. I found this skeleton later. Great find. Would have been stupid not to use it. So I moved myself over here and planted my emergency tree seeds. Been here ever since. Um, can't believe you destroyed your ship. Easy for you to say. Your ship's probably all kinds of fancy modifications and upgrades like working retro boosts and non-flammable construction materials. Anyway, that's how it all went down, Hatchling. Story's over, but feel free to stay and enjoy the fire a while. Oh, or don't. Fire's not going anywhere. Anything else you wanted to know? All right, so. Time to find out and have a chat with Feldspar and get to know some new information. I found a dark bramble seed on Timber Hearth. That's bad business, Hatchling. As Chert will tell you, if you find so much... To if you so much as glance at Bramble's direction, there used to be a, a fifth planet where the Bramble is now. This infectious plant appeared at the centre and kept growing and growing and growing until it shattered the planet and scattered its pieces across space. If you don't get that, if you don't get that seed found, you found sorted real quick, like I suspect Timber Hearth will be heading towards the same fate. And I and I tell you what, we Harvians have overcome far too much to be done in by some. My SQL at midnight taking over my screen. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> Overcome by some worthless seed. Pick up a marshmallow stick. I'd love to pick up a marshmallow stick, but LB's here and it'll really um it'll really set him off, so let's please don't. Um found no my writing saying anglerfish are blind. Aha! So the blasted things do have a weakness. Meaning my fly as fast as you can approach to dealing with them could have used a bit more thought behind it. Ah oh, well, at least they didn't eat me. All well, all's well that ends well, eh, actually? Where should I explore here? That's the spirit. Anyway, it's good, but you should know that, the, that space is weird here, intensely. Ever tried throwing your scout into one of those weird seeds? See there, with the little opening? It's just big enough to launch one through. 
Your scout tracker will tell you that the scout is in two places at once, but I don't think that's wrong. I don't think that's wrong exactly, because space doesn't work right in here. The seed looks small, see, but inside it's bigger. Much bigger. I have a lot of time to think about this, and my theory is space and dark bramble kind of expands as you go through each sphere. That's why it's bigger inside those seeds. Well, that's my theory. Keep in mind that while you're exploring dark bramble and maybe you won't get lost inside forever. Good luck. You reached the core giant's deep. How do you do it? You want to see Korha? Ha, that's a wild one. Well, since you're asking, I've got to assume you haven't made it down there yourself yet, right? If I tell you how, it kind of feels like cheating. Hmm. On a completely unrelated note, that sure was a big hollow vine my ship crashed into. Yep. If I were you, I'd go I'd go take I'd take a walk and see where it ends. Uh, maybe some sort of hint as to uh, getting to the core, possibly. You want to go to the tr the tail end of the anglerfish skeleton here and look for a flickering light in the fog. That'll be my old ship. Path starts there. Not far from here, as a matter of fact. If you go straight past the tail of the anglerfish skeleton here, you'll see a flickering light in the fog. Follow that and you'll find my old ship. Well, what's left of it. Oh, the skeleton. It was like this when I got here. As near as I can tell, this anglerfish must have been chewing on a vine and eating eating a seed. And then the seed grew and grew and grew, grew and grew in the poor fish's stomach until this happened. Gross, huh? The skeleton was a good find. Keeps the fish away. See, they're territorial, so mostly mostly avoid each other. That's why I set up camp here. Well, yeah, sure. Whenever you have the time. Frankly, I kind of like it out here. Quiet, peacefulish. You're a little young to understand, but it's a lot of pressure being the best ever there ever was. Be nice to have a break. All right, so we could possibly tell the person on the mo our Timber Hearth Moon. I think he was the first person to say, wasn't he? That uh, Feldspar was missing. No. Get out of here. Yikes. I did wonder if like, I'd be able to get close to his ship. Potentially fix it, but I guess not.
this point I'm just sort of exploring. I just get turned around. Did, didn't I? Let me just read what he said again. Get to the tail end of the angle if it's coming out for me. Look for me find the fog. That's my old ship, and the path starts there. Down the rabbit hole. Do some gravity crystals in here. <laughs> Before entry, I'm not going to say I'm not. I'm going to say not one. The crash is three. Boring crash is zero. Personal best. Well, never thought I'd see one of these beasts, these outside giants, deep. They were awfully useful back there. Maybe a jellyfish could be useful here too. Blah. This thing tastes horrible. The outside is all rubbery and tough. Maybe that's because it ins insulates the jellyfish inside by getting zapped from getting zapped by electricity. Right. I'm going inside this jellyfish interior cavity to see what what's in what's in there tastes any better so we actually went inside the jellyfish Do not eat, but they are useful. They're useful for insulating against electricity. Hundred and thirty six airboats to go, Mika. Wow. One thing I'm quite interested about there, though, is um, what 
Was I still on Dark Bramble? Or had I made it somewhere else? Good point, LB. Can mark it. Mm, it's definitely on Dark Bramble. I think I really explored the moon too much. Yeah, see, this was the whole... This is where I wanted to come to talk about... Um, um, No, okay. I thought Esker had said at one some point about something about Feldspar and not heard them for a while, but Church, research is probably a church. This is an old crater. The neat thing here is that the composition of the samples I took from the impact site matched the composition of ice and the outskirts of Dark Bramble. I posit that the Atherot was hit by a piece of the planet that used to be where Dark Bramble now lies. <laughs> to follow up on, maybe there's more fragments of the old planet Dark Bramble destroyed on other astral bodies of the solar system. Uh, I guess we already saw that. I don't think there's anything else to, to explore here. Alright, I'm just trying to see if there's any, like, little things we can look at real quick, because, uh, man, it took a massive chunk out of the moon, though, didn't it?
Yeah, I'm just sort of trying to look at the minute to see if there's something, anything minor we can do real quick, because I'm going to be um, ending the stream um, relatively soon, because I am actually starting to get pretty tired now. And I don't think a uh, knock-yawning stream is uh, the best viewing content in the world, so... that landing up, didn't I? Well and truly. I appreciate you all hanging again. Really do. What? What? What am I doing? Why? Um... Oh, okay. I don't think I'm properly in the atmosphere, am I? Which is why it's doing the weird thing. Bounce Felspar, and they're in Dark Bramble. Stars above, this is wonderful news. Thank you, thank you for finding them. That Felspar didn't immediately join you on your ship and return here is incredibly, incredibly Felspar of them. We were never entirely sure what Felspar was thinking back then either. Still, we ought to fish them out from that dreadful place with haste. I'll radio Gossan and have them prepare a ship. It really should be Gossan who brings Felspar home. Again, thank you. You can hardly imagine how profoundly happy I am to hear that he's there alive and unharmed. Okay, cool. Alright, so um, let's just quickly um, check the log. Just to uh, make sure we're all caught up and then... Um, yeah, I apologize like, if the last half an hour, like the energy has sort of dipped a little bit. Um, but yeah, tiredness, I feel like tiredness has like really crept in with me. Um, so yeah, I do apologize if the, the energy and the enthusiasm has dropped slightly, any, any at all. At all, any. I struggle to speak now as well, which isn't great. No, it looks like we found everything there was to find. Okay, so, um, yeah, more to explore on Dark Bramble next week. Um, but, yeah, I mean, 
sort of like the last of the major places to explore, right? We haven't been able to get to the sun station yet. However, I believe like we need to go to the Ash Twin to be able to get to there. Obviously, the Ash Twin is like the key to everything. Everything that's happening and any chance of potential surviving, then um, that's um, definitely a, a big key thing. Now, the, ra the radio tower, I'm still not sure about. I mean... I mean, the only, the only thing we can do with this is obviously, like I, like I theorised before, um, is to go to the satellite at each of the four um, degrees that the um, the other pictures were taken from, and um, wait and see if anything happens there. I guess, but um, yeah. I'm not really sure. But guys, thank you very much for hanging. I Like I said, I really do appreciate um, all the support this week. This week has been a crazy week in terms of Outer Wilds. I think, I feel like we have like made loads and loads of progress um, on the game. And um, yeah, I've been so pumped to play this every night this week. And uh, I think having the extra stream tonight as well has really helped. And we've, we've certainly learnt a lot of new things tonight uh, in that sort of experiment exploration I just can't talk anymore guys thank you very much enjoy your weekend whatever you got planned and I hope to see you on the other side where we'll be continuing on Monday night with some more Outer Wilds Zatrix thank you very much for the follow right again there I appreciate everybody welcome welcome to the crew but until next time guys thank you very much I've been Nock you've been awesome stay safe and as always happy gaming thanks guys good night goodbye